It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do I 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 do I? It makes no difference if it's sweet or hot. Just give that rhythm everything you got. No, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do I 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 do I? What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? This is Ty. I am here to review Tyler Perry's latest film, A Jazz Man's Blues, which is out right now on Netflix. I've seen it when it premiered, and here I am bringing you my review. And listen, there are going to be some spoilers, so if you don't want to hear what happened in the film, just move on, pause this, come back after you've watched it. But anyway, it's A Jazz Man's Blues. It's a departure for Mr. Perry because it doesn't have the tropes and the cliches that some of his other films has. There's no Medea up in here. There are no uh, preachy gospel overtones in this one. There's none of those funny wigs that, <laughs> that a lot of his films do have. And, you know, it's because this is a period piece, y'all. And Tyler Perry himself said that it took him 25 years to do this film. And you know, at one point he wanted the lovely, talented Diana Ross to star in it alongside him. Well, she said, no, I guess clearly that didn't happen. And he's not in it as well, but we have some newcomer actors that are starring in this, that he has in this, that he, um, such as Joshua Boone, he's the main character, Amira Van, Soleil Pfeiffer, Austin Scott, Ryan Eggle. That is the cast. Now, I'm not that, I'm not really familiar with these actors, but they did a great job here. And um, this film, like I said, it's a period piece set mostly in the 1940s. And it's a love story. It's tackling issues such as, you know, racism, sexism, uh, childhood trauma, secrets, lies, things of that nature. There's a lot to deal with family dynamics here. There's a lot going on in this film. And I'm going to say the film looks gorgeous. It looks, they, he took his time and it shows the film has a nice pace to it. The film looks good. Um, the music, the score is beautiful because the music is done by the one and only Terrence Blanchard, who we know has worked on scores with Ty with um, Spike Lee. And then the choreography for the jazz scenes and stuff was done by none other than Miss Debbie Allen. So, you know, we have some excellence going on around here. So the film starts off in the beginning. We see this man, Jonathan, on television. Clearly, it, just start it started in 1987. The film starts in 87. And you see this man, Jonathan, who's clearly racist and got a little racist views. He's making some remarks about affirmative action. And Miss Hattie Mae ain't having that. And she turns her TV off and she decides to walk the town. It takes her 45 minutes to get to town. <laughs> you see the montage of her walking. She's on the road. She's on the tracks. Then she finally, I said, where is this old lady? When is she going to get there? She finally gets there and um, she Goes into his office, unannounced or whatever. She tells him, listen, I need you to investigate a murder that happened in 1947. He's like, what do you want me to do about this? And at first he was going to blow her off until she dropped the, the stack of envelopes and letters down. He said, here's a record of everything he kept. And we're like, he, what's going on? So he, he drops it down on him. He looks at it. He recognizes his mother's name. And then we start flashing back. And it takes us to 1937. And that is where we meet the characters of this story. And that would be Bayou, uh, the main character, his mother, Hattie Mae, his brother, Willie Earl, and his father, who's very abusive and mean towards him. And, you know, in the beginning, it singing and damn jamming. And we learn right off the bat that there's sibling rivalry and there's favoritism because daddy don't like Bayou because Bayou don't know how to play the trumpet or whatever and the way as well as Willie Earl does. And Willie Earl is the favorite child of his, but mama Hattie Mae, she loves her children and she treats Bayou just fine. But the father early on, you see that he just has this. Now that's a thing that does tend to go on in a lot of Tally Perry movies, these mean parents or this mean person. And this guy's just totally mean and resentful towards Bayou. And, you know, Bayou cannot do anything right. Bayou can't make a man out of him and this, that, and the third. So we also meet um, Bayou's friend, Sisty, who I, I like that character. She's funny. She's cool, I would say. And um, we, we get introduced to the love of his life or the future love of his life, 
uh, Leanne, a.k.a. Bucket, and she's called Bucket because her mama dropped her off to her granddaddy's house like an empty bucket or something like that. That was the analogy they said. But anyway, she's a fair-skinned girl that can, you know, that's going to, you know, pretty girl, whatever. And Bucket, I mean, Bayou has his eyes set on her. But she has his grandfather that's straight from the pits of hell that doesn't want nobody near her. And unfortunately, we see him abuse her as well. So she's coming from a bad home. But when she introduces, when Bayou and her meet, they mesh. And we see over time, they fall in love. She even teaches Bayou how to read. And I thought that was cute how they were doing it, you know, the little paper Play airplanes with notes on the love notes and sneaking out at night to see each other because you know that love is forbidden and when he tried to go introduce himself and try to take her out to some dance grandpa was not having that so now he musters up the thing that you know i'm gonna marry this woman is what he says he's gonna marry her and his plans the her mother comes back into town and throws a whole monkey wrench in that and we take leanne up north so leanne bucket is up north and so we learned throughout this time, Leanne Bucket's up north, poor Bayou and his mama, the father leaves, so he leaves for Chicago. He tells Willie Earl he can't go either, so he leaves for Chicago to pursue this dream, to work at the, the Capitol Royale or whatever the name of the place was in Chicago. That's where you make it big as a big jazz musician. He leaves the family for that. This makes Willie Earl resentful towards Hattie Mae and Bayou, and he eventually leaves off to Chicago. So now that just leaves old Willie Earl, I mean, that leaves poor Bayou and his mama Hattie Mae all alone. You know, she, she does laundry, that's her thing. But Willie Earl ends up going into the service, he gets discharged from that, and things start to work out for them because now... Mama Hattie Mae got this juke joint and it's jumping. She's money's good with that. You know, the laundry business is good. Um, Bayou's in here singing and they're doing pretty good. But Bayou still got love on his mind. He's still in love with Leanne. And he's writing letters to her that she's not getting. And she's writing letters to him that he's not getting. And this love is lost. And I, I like that because I'm a sucker for love. I like that love thing. But at the same time, I was saying to myself, this is not the kind of love I want where it's going to make me stupid. Because I'm saying to myself, by you, sir, you, you're like the star that you join. All these fine women in here. This girl that went way up north somewhere. You still thinking about her? You still writing letters? Sir, move on. But, you know, if if I had written the movie, the movie would have been 30 minutes long because it, it wouldn't have there wouldn't have been no story because Bayou wouldn't have been Bayou would have moved on. To. <laughs> but no, the story is it's a pleasant story. So, and then all the things that's happening to the characters. So. Willie Earl comes back and now he's got this manager, Ira, and then the, 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 Ira has been helping him and Ira, you know, gets a little sick or whatever. And. He has Hattie Mae help Ira. And as that's going on, guess who else comes back into town? And I'm like, how many years have passed now? So now Lillian Bucket is, comes back into town. And this time she's a married woman. But guess what, y'all? She's married to the sheriff's brother. She's passing for white. So Bucket that went up north with her mama, went up north black, came back white. Came back white and married to the racist of the town. <laughs> this is crazy. So now that scene, what a scene that was when they discover each other because Bucket, I mean, because um, Sisty, which is uh, works for them, Sisty cleans the house of this mayor or whoever he was, the sheriff or whatever. She cleans the house for the white folks. Uh, Bayou went over there to bring the laundry and... That's when they discover that, you know, isn't that crazy? That discover that Bucket is married to this white man. And that scene where she saw him and he saw her, I was like, wow, that's crazy. Now, you know this is the Jim Crow South. What is wrong with you? And you know, you know, Bayou was so innocent and naive, but he made some real stupid choices to leave this girl alone. So they start tipping and dipping and sneaking around and all that. And, you know, uh, Leanne's mother is very hateful and she wants her daughter to pass for white. When she gets wind of this, she's like, listen, 
she she puts a monkey wrench in that. But see, when Bayou first meets back up with Leanne after writing all these letters, she explains to him, they told me they was going to kill you if I didn't leave with them. I had no choice, this, that, and the third. Right there, that keyword, kill. Sweetheart, that's when I would have left you alone, especially at this time period. But he's so in love that he decides to keep messing with him. And like I said, her mama's not having that. Her mother puts out this little lie that, well, before I go into that, I got to go to one of my favorite scenes in the film. And that's the scene between Leanne and Sisty. And that's when Leanne called herself being jealous because she ain't like the way that... Uh, Sisty touched by you or whatever because now remember they sneaking around tipping and dipping but you could get it in some trouble so Sisty had to help them when you know they was tipping around tipping and dipping Sisty had to help them and you know come up with an idea or whatever to get to make sure because the white people looking for Leanne what you doing in the black side of town so they had to make up this lie oh she was looking for me she was driving she was thinking she had to um she was driving out here to drop me off no 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 she covered for them so that's what sisty was doing for them because they tipping and dipping but now leanne got a little jealous because she thought that uh sisty was messing with bayou ma'am you're doing too much so now they're at the house and this is my favorite scene in the movie for some reason and Leanne tells Sisty to clean this, this uh, floor up and do it now. She's being real mean. And Sisty's like, well, let me go change out of this. This is my party dress. Let me change up out of this and put on my thing and I'll clean it again. She decides to slap Sisty. Sisty slapped her ass right back. And I enjoyed that. And Sisty said, oh, you think I don't know it's you, Miss Bucket? That was my favorite scene right there because it was like, oh, we, I know who you are. You don't get to, how dare you try to treat me like that? You just as black as I am. You just passing right now. That was my favorite scene in the movie. It really was. I really enjoyed that scene because I was glad when Sisty smacked her back. And I'm going to go on to say that I think that Leanne is the villain this whole time because she's selfish. She's selfish. I, I'm going to expand on that a little bit later. So now, like I said, Leanne's mama, who's totally evil, decides she's going to tell the white folks that... She saw that someone saw uh, Bayou whistle at Leanne. So, you know, this is kind of given the kind of put you in the mind of what happened to Emmett Till in real life. And so now the town is ready to go down there and handle him and lynch him. So now Bayou has to leave with his brother, Willie Earl, who really don't like him, and with Ira up to Chicago. So he leaves with them just in time. So you think he's safe. You're like, good, he's safe. But he still can't get his mind off this girl. They get to Chicago. He becomes a jazz sensation. You know, and those scenes were beautiful. The performances, the singing, all that was beautiful. He becomes the star and not his brother, Willie Earl. Willie Earl turns into drugs and Willie Earl is more resentful and hateful because, you know, he never really liked Bayou anyway. So he's more resentful and hateful. And he's like, you know what? This is your fault. I'm mad. And then he gets he keeps turning more and more into drugs and he eventually gets fired. But now this is what pisses me off so much. Now, Bayou is sending money back south for his mother his mother's not getting it her business is not going so well she's full fell on hard times or whatever and he's still thinking about leanne i don't want that kind of love y'all i don't want it that to, you know i want to be in love i don't want that kind of love this is stupid love right now man you're gonna get killed so he wants to let me go back down here now he got this plan i'm gonna go back down south right to go get Leanne and come back up here with, you know, we, she going to run off with me. Sir, like Ira told him, like, you don't need to go back down there. How about we send for your mother, bring her up here, send for whatever. How about Leanne get on a train and meet you? So why are you going back down there? They tried to kill you. They don't forget what's wrong with you. But he's like, no, I'm going to go down. There. It's just going to be one night. They ain't going to remember. But now remember, his brother, Willie Earl, is very resentful and jealous and that was another great scene when he went to get Willie Earl out of the room and Willie Earl was so high off drugs off the heroin and all of that and Willie Earl told him we found out what happened to the father the father ended up dying and this that and the third and 
it, that was really a sad part. But, and you see him still taking care of his brother, even though his brother's saying these vile things to him. But what's awful about this whole thing is when they get down there because of his jealousy, Willie Earl's jealousy, Willie Earl goes to the white folks, tells the sheriff, yeah, remember that boy that whistled at, <laughs> that whistled at uh, Leanne? He's back. He gonna be at such and such juke joint. Be down here. That was disgusting and shameful. It was like, wow, you did that to your own brother over jealousy when your real downfall was the drugs. That's your real downfall. So they got this plan. I'm looking at the screen like, no, no, don't do it. I'm like, why is he back down here in this town? He comes down there to perform this one last time. They're trying to, they, you know, so him and Leanne going to meet up. She on the bus waiting for him. Oh, by the way, she had a baby. She didn't know. Leanne got on my nerves too. Leave us alone. I was with her. I was with Bucket's mother. I mean, I was with Bayou's mother. Ma'am, get on up out of here. You're going to get us killed. She keep coming over to the black neighborhood, coming over to the house, had a baby. Don't be having your, having the baby up in, in, um, uh, Hattie Mae's house, but then I thought about it. You know why she did that? She did that out of precaution because she was like, what if this baby come out chocolate? So let me make sure. Be sure. That, that, that did make sense that she came over and gave birth there just in case the baby came out a little brown and you know everybody gonna get hurt. So that's why she did that. So the baby came out light. So the baby, she's passing off as the guy she's married's child. But... We find out that this is really Bayou's baby. And I'm like, oh, my God. This, that whole thing just gave me a heck. I'm just like, Bayou don't go back down there. Bayou goes back down. Like I said, his brother told on him. They come, unfortunately, kill him. Leanne don't come out of the bus. She's just crying. And that's how that story ended. And it was so sad because he had so much promise this career as this musician was taken off. He had that hit record and he had to go back here for love. I mean, at it, it, one point the movie showed, I did enjoy the movie. I did enjoy it. And it showed that love, but I don't want that kind of love y'all because that don't make no sense. So now we go back to the present day, which is in 1987. For that time, we go back to 87 and Jonathan, the politician, he realizes, he's like, wait a minute. He is the child they're talking about. So he's like, I'm had these bigoted views and my dad is a black man, which makes me a black man. And so he goes to his mother, who Leanne is looking just as old as Hattie Mae. <laughs> Cause we find out that's Hattie Mae, you know, that's brought those letters to him. Leanne is looking old, is playing the records for her. She starts crying and her crying was the confirmation basically that she's, um, that Bayou is that is Jonathan's father. And I'm like, ooh, it was it was a good story. And that's pretty much it. It was a great, I thought it was a good story. Good storytelling, a good pace, good acting. But it made me upset, y'all. Because I was like, man, you're so stupid. Why are you messing with this girl? I was even mad at Sisty, too. Because stop passing notes. Stop sending notes. I wouldn't have had nothing to do with that. I wouldn't have let y'all communicate. When she first handed, when, um... Leanne first handed sister that note to give to him. I would have ripped that thing up. He wouldn't have got no note from me. Nah, this, we good. We good. But other than that, I mean, if, if it was up to me, it wouldn't have been no film because I would have been doing the right thing. But these people were making stupid choices for love. And like I said, I feel like that Leanne is the villain because she was selfish. Go on about your business. Tell this man to go ahead. Leave him alone. Once you knew you wouldn't pass for white, you knew that was dangerous. You tip back down here. You shouldn't have came back into the black side of town, tipping and dipping with Bayou because you knew what it was going to give. You you, you had a lot. You had a role of playing that. You could have easily stopped a lot of that. She could have. I feel like she's the villain too. Her and the brother, her and Willie Earl and um, her mama, those are the villains. So villains are Leanne, Leanne's mama, and Willie Earl. Those are the villains for me in this. Because I'm like, come on, why? So dirty that y'all would do that. Trying to, you just, just so dirty. But for Leanne, I feel like Leanne could have, you know, and then you live this whole life for the rest of your life. 
basically, you know, you lived and now you're crying at the end and, you know, you, you kept that secret in all those years, which I understand. But at the same time, she's still a villain in my eyes. Just that's just my opinion. So that's all I thought. I thought the film was well done. It had a lot of messages in it, um, a lot of topics in it and issues. And tell me your thoughts. Did you like the film? Why did you like it? Why didn't you like it? I thought it was good. I enjoyed that. I like period pieces. It didn't, and I like when a film gets me involved when I'm getting upset because I was upset. Like, why would you go there? And why don't you leave him alone? You know you're going to get him hurt. Get out of here. That's, that's why I call her the villain. It's like, this is falling on you. You pass it for white. Stay on over there. Stop causing trouble for everybody else because of you now. The business is a failing and all this. Nah, come on. Hattie may have to come through hard times because of you. Come on. You and your mama. Nah. But you know, I will say, I wanted to know whatever became of Willie Earl. They never said. But anyway, that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all in the next video.